For Americans, July 4th is a day for fireworks. However, in 2012, the most exciting pyrotechnics were of a scientific rather than the incendiary variety. Rather than gathering with family for cookouts in parks across the country, physicists either gathered in an auditorium at the CERN laboratory or at least watched the excitement via live video feed. A new discovery was anticipated, one over 50 years in the making. In 1964, three scientific papers written by six different physicists proposed a previously unsuspected energy field in the universe. While he was not the only keen mind who had the idea, this new energy field is now called the Higgs field after Dr. Peter Higgs. Technically, what scientists claimed in July of 2012 was that a new particle had been discovered. In order to understand whether the new particle was the Higgs boson or not, Researchers performed several tests to see if the new particle had the right properties. While every test that was performed showed that the new discovery acted like the Higgs boson was predicted to act, there were many properties that hadn't been tested. If CERN had discovered a new fruit, the report would be that the new fruit looked and smelled like an apple, but nobody had touched, tasted, or listened to it yet. So what was claimed was the magic phrase, the newly discovered particle is consistent with being the Higgs boson. All tested properties supported the claim, but more tests were needed to make a definitive claim. So what has happened in the intervening months? Well, the first thing is that we collected a lot more data. Not sweating what the units mean, in July of 2012 we had about 10 units of data, and now we have 25. This increase in data means that we can remeasure the things studied last year with improved precision. However, in addition to improving existing measurements, we can study new properties. Since the Higgs boson was predicted from a theory, all of its properties were completely specified. For instance, some of its expected qualities are that it be electrically neutral, have a spin of zero, a positive parity, and have nothing inside of it. In March of 2013, LHC scientists released the results of improved analyses. We measured the various ways a Higgs boson can be made and the many ways in which it can decay. All measurements were statistically consistent with predictions. The phrase statistically consistent means that while the measurements weren't exactly as predicted, they were as close as could be expected for the amount of data collected. These measurements were improvements over the results of July 2012, but were basically the same thing. However, Two new measurements were also made. The first was the spin of the new particle. From the patterns observed in 2012, we knew that the new particle had to have either a spin of zero or two. It might be hard to imagine how you would measure the spin of a subatomic particle, but it's easy to understand how you would do it in principle. If a particle has a spin of zero, that means it isn't spinning. If you think of an isolated particle in empty space just sitting there, there is nothing that makes one direction different from any other direction. Left is the same as up is the same as the direction pointing at CERN. If there is nothing to pick a particular di direction, then there is nothing to tell the decay products where to go. Thus, they will decay with equal probability in all directions, sometimes this way and sometimes that. In contrast, if a particle has a spin of two, then there is an axis the particle is spinning around. This picks a special direction. Because of this, and because the decay products themselves have a spin, it means that the decay products won't go in all directions with equal probability. There will be a specific pattern with some directions happening more often. So this was easy. When we checked the directions, we found that all directions occurred with equal probability. A spin zero particle was highly favored. Since the Higgs boson is predicted to have a spin of zero, this is additional support that a Higgs boson has been found. Another property that is harder to understand is the idea of parity. Parity is when you ask what happens when you swap left with right, up with down, and forward with backward. Can you tell the difference? As an illustration, we see a simplified version of parity here, when you swap just left and right. If, when you swap the two, it doesn't look very different, this is positive parity. If, when you swap the two, it looks just the opposite, then this is negative parity. When we studied the data to see which sort of parity the new particle had, we found that it had positive parity. This is the same parity that the Higgs boson is predicted to have. Thus, we have another supporting bit of information suggesting that the new particle might be a Higgs boson. In fact, 
most scientists are now willing to say that we have found a Higgs boson. Now you might have noticed that I keep saying a Higgs boson and not the Higgs boson. What's up with that? The problem is that while the standard model predicts a single Higgs boson, there are other newer theories that predict more than one. Thus, in order to be certain that we found the Higgs boson of the standard model, we needed to establish that there aren't other undiscovered Higgs bosons out there. That will take some time. In fact, it may well require that we take a lot more data, and the final answer will have to wait until the LHC resumes operations in early 2015. While the researchers will do their best to squeeze out the last bit of information from this data, it may be that we'll all have to be patient. Oh, you might have been wondering about the shirt. It is true that I'm a member of one of the collaborations that discovered the Higgs boson. Somehow my mom got the idea that I did it all myself, so she bought it for me. Actually, this discovery took two experiments with over 6,000 physicists. If you include the accelerator scientists, the number is more like 10,000. And we remember that the effort has taken about 20 years. The real number of people it took to find the Higgs boson is probably double that or even more. In fact, if you're watching this, there's a good chance that your country's science department or ministry contributed funds to the effort. And get right down to it, the discovery of the Higgs boson has really been a scientific triumph in which all of humanity can take some credit. But, you know, since we're friends and all, I'd really appreciate it if you don't tell my mom. She's been bragging to her bridge club and, well, you'll understand. Thanks.